Council members Story. Here. Peterson. Here. Brooks. Here. Bodor. Here. And Mayor Bertrand. Here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Okay, we have some presentations, and I believe we have an introduction. And who has the honor of introducing our new information technology specialist? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, it's my pleasure to introduce our new information systems specialist, Heather Haggerty. Heather comes to us from over the hill with more than 20 years of IT experience, where she most re recently served as the director of um, information on structural technology at the Union School District in Campbell. Uh, Heather was emerged as the clear number one choice out of a competitive pool of applicants. It's really great news to be able to bring this position back in-house where we've contracted it out for a couple of years. And so with that, I'm happy to introduce Heather to the City Council. Yeah, welcome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've been able to cut down her commute yes. substantially. <laughs> to, to you get to walk yeah, to, to work. Walking. I get to walk to work. You're yeah. probably the closest. Yeah, yeah, I think so. so yeah, far. really. Yeah. Okay. Thank After a visit at Gales. Yeah. <laughs> Not too many. <laughs> okay. Okay. Glad to have you here, Heather. I'd just like to say, I just want to make one acknowledgement. I'd just like to thank Larry for all the work behind the scenes for the past two years of, of filling in, and uh, I'm glad we've finally hired a replacement for you. So. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a new assistant planner, and who will be the, oh, Kitty, of course. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Sean Sasanto to you this evening. Many of you probably recognize Sean. He was working as a planning intern. He was involved in our last recruitment for the assistant planner and was hired as an intern during that recruitment. It was a great opportunity to, for us to see his dedication and as a hard worker with the city. And he's um, now a, the <coughs> assistant planner. We were able, because he was in that last recruitment, to hire him within that recruitment when, our when the position was vacated. So it's my pleasure to introduce Sean. He um, has a degree from Humboldt State University and um, he's got great GIS skills. He's been very helpful in the applications and, um, and it's my pleasure to introduce Sean. Okay, hey, thank you, Sean. Yeah, it's uh, good to be back. I'm from Aptos in the Bay Area, so I'm happy to be here. Welcome, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have you. Yeah. Welcome back permanently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. So, do we have any additional materials? There is no additional material tonight. Okay. Any additions and deletions to our agenda? M Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I, I did want to just make one correction to the agenda. Unfortunately, our agenda management software had a bit of a snafu in printing the agenda. You may have noticed that items uh, eight C and D were different in the agenda packet from the way they were listed on the agenda and the way they were listed online. So the correct order of business as I would propose for tonight's hearing would be we'll hear the 835 Bay Avenue conditional use permit first, then we'll hear uh, D, the consider the contract and budget for the BIA, and then item C would come next would be the goals and principles. That was the intended order of business for this evening. Okay, so we'll switch C and D. With that, this is a time to give public comments. You have three minutes to give public comments on any item not on the agenda. Anyone would like to come forward and speak? Thank you. Please let us know for the record who you are. Good evening, honorable council members. My name is Rachel Kippen. I am the new executive director of O'Neill Sea Odyssey, and I wanted to come and introduce myself. Um, I've had the pleasure of working alongside many of you, and I wanted to thank you for your ongoing collaboration and support uh, working with O'Neill Sea Odyssey, and also a uh, thanks to Larry, of course, for his uh, work alongside us. Um, Dan, who could not be here tonight, also wanted to pass along his gratitude to you all, and that's another reason that I'm here. I wanted to invite you to 
Dan Heafley's retirement celebration. It is on April 11th, Thursday, April 11th, at the Coconut Grove from 5 to 7.30. I brought some flyers and my business card as well. I hope to see you there. Um, and I also encourage you, any ideas for increased collaboration or things that you'd like to see or if you'd like to come out and, and shadow our program if you haven't had the opportunity to do so yet, please do let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Any other members from the public like to come forward? Seeing none, let's bring it back to city council and staff comments. Any comments? I have none. Okay. No. no. I just have a quick comment. Um, tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock, the Chamber of Commerce uh, will be hosting a under new ownership ribbon cutting with uh, Zizo's Coffee over in Brown Ranch Marketplace. Uh, they're one of our donors to the new library and I think it's gonna be a really uh, fun, exciting event. So anyone who's able to attend, I would look forward to seeing you there. No comments. Oh, okay. So I went to um, an event with the neighbors on the Bromer Street project, um, Steve and our new aide. Uh, Kalish has been here a year. I thought, you <laughs> I keep saying you've just got here, but um, that was great. There was uh, about 12 uh, uh, citizens there, including two babies, and a lot of questions and uh, good answers, and I appreciate the Public Works Department to uh, make this available to the public. Um, I also talked to about four or five neighbors on uh, J Street, and this is re related to the speed bumps. Uh, a lot of people are quite happy with them uh, about time. They're very happy the city is doing things. And also, um, City of Santa Cruz put on a symposium last Saturday, which I attended, uh, San Lorenzo River, and it was all about the aquatic life, the fish, and um, other aspects of what's going on there, including a presentation on pumas. Interestingly enough, they're going to do something like what we're doing here with the flume. It's a totally different technology. It's a really beautiful thing, and one reason why they have to do it differently is because um, actually when water from other rivers around here deplete, fish go to the San Lorenzo River, so it's a good place for fish from other areas of this area. So those are my comments. City staff? I think Steve has one more announcement on top of the Bromer meeting. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I just want to make you all aware that um, the tree lights down the village, we have um, put up two different new colors. Um, they, there's four trees at the corner of Stockton, or uh, Capitol Road and Capitol Avenue and San Jose Ave, that's where we are, sorry. And so two of the corners have different color lights. One of the new lights is almost indistinguishable from the original lights that were there. Just so you know, if you can't tell them, that's because just the way the colors worked out. We have increased the brightness again so that it's more stands out a little bit more as people look at the color. So go take a look when it's dark again. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? See clerk, comments? No. Nope. Okay, let's bring it back to the consent calendar. I do have a question about um, city checks. Just, um, just maybe Jim is here. Basically, what is the multidisciplinary interview center? I, I haven't heard of that yet. It's actually a police department expenditure, so. <laughs> okay, sorry, Jim. Yeah. I thought it was you. <laughs> okay. Hey, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the uh, MDIC, uh, also referred to as the uh, the Sky. They have a new name, but the multidisciplinary interview center. You might recall that about a year ago, year and a half ago, they had a grand opening out there. All of the uh, agent, law enforcement agencies in the county, probation, the DA's office, they joined together in an MOU. And that is the facility we use to do forensic interviews of youth, right. victims, right. suspects, family members. It's quite a resource in the county. We kind of echoed uh, resources uh, over the hill in Santa Clara County. And it's been beneficial to ourselves and many of the agencies, law enforcement agencies, uh, since its opening about a year and a half ago. Great, thank you for that. Maybe you could bring that back to council and tell us a little bit more how it helps us and something of its uh, workings and stuff. We'd be happy to. Be good to know about it. Any other questions of uh, anything on the consent calendar? No? Any questions from the audience about items on the consent calendar? Do I hear a motion to I'll adopt? move the consent calendar. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. okay. So let's go on to general government public hearings. 
we are privileged to have a hearing on the Santa Cruz County Youth Violence Prevention Task Force. And I see Julie in the audience, but I think our captain is going to introduce her. Yes. <clears throat> uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Um, it's, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you uh, Julie Burr from the United Way. Um, she's kind of spearheaded this project and, uh, and we've had Sergeant uh, Ryan as a liaison for our department and they're gonna provide a, uh, a PowerPoint to kind of explain what the Youth Violence Prevention Task Force is and how it's moving um, f through our community right now, so. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council, for having me tonight. I'm excited to be here, and I'm um, beyond excited to be working really closely with the City of Capitola right now. So um, I want to briefly give an overview of the task force um, for those of you that aren't familiar with our work. The task force is a countywide, multi-sector collaborative initiative that you know, works to address violence prevention by looking at issues of connections, capacity, and resources, really seeing those areas as our role in looking at issues of prevention. We're data-driven, we use a strength-based public health approach, and we seek system and policy shifts to create long-term sustainable change. We're committed to addressing issues of equity, which you'll see in the project that we're gonna be presenting tonight, as well as engaging meaningfully with youth and community members in creating safe and thriving communities. I wanna thank the city of Capitola for in endorsing our strategic plan back in 2015 and for your continued support and partnership along the way. Um, the mayor has been involved at our table for many years now and we appreciate that work that we get to do together. On that note, in terms of partnership, I wanna turn it over to Sergeant Ryan who I've been working with really closely to dive in a little bit more deeply. Good evening. So um, about a year ago, I had the <clears throat> honor of being selected to participate in um, starting our partnership um, and doing some hands-on training. Myself and Officer Brantley Sandretti attended a culture, uh, implicit bias training and a cultural, culturally responsive organization uh, workshop. Um, it was really pretty incredible to be there and the way they pulled those of all of us together, all the law enforcement agencies, um, as well as community members and stakeholders. Um, moving forward, I continued my being uh, the liaison for the Capitol Police Department, bringing back the information as we move forward with uh, this project. And so I've been a part of the logistics portion of it in bringing the location and um, recruitment and all that together for the participants that are gonna, as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the elusive project, <laughs> um, what we're working on is uh, really addressing a prioritized strategy of strengthening law enforcement and community relationships. This is a strategy that was in our strategic plan in 2015 and when we launched the plan and the place-based initiatives in Watsonville and Santa Cruz Live Oak started implementing the plan, this, this strategy really rose to the top and, ha and has had continued momentum ever since. Um, and what we know, based on the research, is that increased trust in community between community and law enforcement means safer communities. When community members and young people respect law and trust the members of law enforcement in their community, they're more likely to follow the rule of law. So the project we're looking at specifically is having community law enforcement dialogues. And we're taking a really countywide approach to this and Capitola is one of the locations where we'll hold a dialogue. And really the, the, the mission of this project is to create these spaces for young people and law enforcement community members to connect, to get to know each other, to talk about their perspectives and experiences, um, see each other differently, and then begin to vision for themselves and together what they want for their community. They're gonna talk about barriers to achieving that vision and what actions we can take to make that vision a reality. It's a circle style dialogue where everyone has an equal voice and participants, com participants commit to really understanding and listening to each other's views. Um, and facilitators have been trained locally. We have a group of about 20 of them that are volunteering their time and uh, they put in two days of training to hold these spaces with community members, to really be neutral facilitators and work through the six steps that go through this process. 
Um, touching back on the theme of partnership, I want to um, highlight the fact that we've been selected by Everyday Democracy. Um, this is their model, the Dialogue to Change model. They're a national organization that's been doing Dialogues to Change models to address a host of community issues since 1989. Last spring in 27, 2018, they chose Santa Cruz County and St. Louis to be their two partner communities in the country to do this work. So we're honored to be working with them. It's their model, it's their expertise. They've been coming in, they've trained us to organize, they've trained us, they train the facilitators. They're gonna be a part of the um, action component of this work as well. And again, I wanna thank, um, in terms of partnership, Capitola Police Department and the chief and, and captain and sergeant here, because really we couldn't do this work without them here in Capitola and we have countywide commitment. So all of the chiefs across the county are participating as well as the sheriff. And so we're very excited to do this work countywide and be a model for the state and the rest of the country um, in terms of really partnering with law enforcement differently to create, um, and young people to create the communities that we wanna see. In terms of the timeline and the project itself, um, the dialogue circles are gonna start in April and extend into May. The, each group is about 12 to 15 people, again, law enforcement, youth, and adult community members. It'll be the same group of people that move through two-hour sessions once a week for six weeks because each session will have a topic, activities, different things that guide them through all of these different pieces to get towards action, and it's important that this group do this work together all the way through. Um, the Capitola Circle will be happening on Wednesdays from 6 to 8 p.m., starting April 10th and, and completing on May 15th at Shore Life Community Church. Um, it was important that it be held in a neutral location where community felt comfortable to be a part of this process. Food will be provided as well as childcare and translation as needed. Um, we also are providing $25 gift cards um, to Target for youth under the age of 21 for every session they complete. We wanted to make this process inclusive. We wanted to make it as accessible as possible so that community really felt like they could be a part of this process, hence doing evenings and all of those other incentives. Again, it's an action-oriented model. So when the circles are completed in, in mid-May, we're gonna have an event a couple weeks later called an action forum, where we'll bring together all of the circles from across the county. We'll invite all of you, um, the media, other stakeholders, other youth that, you know, there's only so many slots in a circle, so other community members that are interested to really celebrate the work, and then also begin to talk about what action items were, you know, were developed in each of these groups and start prioritizing what we wanna work on together. The outcomes include, um, again, increased trust, increased involvement and inclusion in issues of community safety, and development of allies, you know, for both law enforcement and community alike in terms of really building that social capital, having this tool in our toolbox and having these bridges already built so that when needed, we can come together and solve, you know, solve issues differently. And on that note, I'm gonna turn it back over to Sergeant Ryan. So um, I really wanted to be a part of the circles, but I stepped away because I was a part of the logistics portion of it, but it's really gonna be a great opportunity. Um, Officer Steve Anderson and Brantley Sandretti are, have committed to the six sessions and being an active, open part of those sessions to not, grow, to not attend in uniform so that we're not there with um, that you know, as a barrier and to really just be open and vulnerable and willing to share. And in turn, also bring what they learn and experience back to the Capitol Police Department so that we can grow. Um, in my experience here, <clears throat> we've done a great job of partnering with the community, but there's always room for improvement and there's always things that we're gonna learn. So um, that's, and just break, you know, breaking down some of those barriers that keep us from moving forward. I'm really excited that we're able to move in this direction. Okay, no. So again, I just wanna thank the city of Capitola for being a part of this work. And I want to ask all of you if you will share information about this project. We're currently registering youth and adult community members to be a part of this project. And we are looking for five youth and five adults to participate. It's meant to be a small group so they can really connect. Um, and I've shared the link there, and again, those are the incentives. Um, we actually have one adult and one youth already registered, so we're only looking for four of each. Um, but that's my ask of you, and um, I, I'm here to answer any questions you have. 
Sam. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, well, Julie, this is a great work that you're doing. I'm really proud that our police department is enthusiastically participating in it. Um, I think it's really important that we build trust between the police department and even the city and our youth here in the community. And I'm glad you mentioned that um, site where we could maybe go ahead and spread the word, but I was wondering whatever the kind of outreach um, you will be doing just, just to get the word out uh, to the kids at New Brighton and, uh, uh, you know, and when many kids here go to SoCal Elementary, Main Street Elementary, um, so I was, maybe you could speak about that. So part of, um, part of what we've done in our um, logistics planning meetings is each of us that are from our respective agencies and jurisdictions have committed to reaching out to those folks. So um, it's on our Instagram, uh, Facebook. I've had FaceTime with the schools. Um, I have had kids go to SoCal High and I taught at Harbor High. So I just, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's amazing how when we actually all came together in the room, we just started sharing resources. So Wonderful. Th th that that's the outreach that I committed to as the, um, from the Capitol Police Department. All right, thank you. Yeah. Otherwise, in addition to that, we've been sharing it with our entire Youth Violence Prevention Task Force, Task Force Network, which is over 600 people, um, our entire United Way Network. Um, I'm starting to hear it from people that didn't know about it, so I, I know that the word is getting around, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're, we're trying in any way possible. We're, I'm telling, I tell the clerk at the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> it's all I'm talking about, it's all I'm thinking Promote about. Promote those gift cards. That's <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, it's always been a pleasure working with you, and I definitely appreciate your energy for this program. And I think it says a lot for United Way here in Capitola that out of the whole nation, this was one of the two. So I, I just, this is great. And I think it also says something about our police department. Uh, for as long as I remember, going back to Rudy at least, um, this police department has been committed to this program, Youth Violence Prevention. And so I'm um, glad to see our current chief is continuing that and that he has staff support. So thank you, Sergeant. Thank you, Captain, for being part of this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, let's move on. Uh, just a report we have accepted. Just moving on to item B, uh, 835 Bay Avenue, temporary use permit. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, before you this evening is a temporary use permit for the storage of vehicles at 835 Bay Avenue. I'm gonna give you a brief history of the site. In 2012, there was a negative Planning Commission recommendation for a model home display at the site. It was approved by City Council during an appeal for a temporary use for one year. Um, there were two extensions granted to that, uh, actually three extensions granted for the temporary model home in 2013, 2015, and 2017. Um, in 2015, Toyota uh, approached the Red Tree properties and asked if they could also be on the site to um, store vehicles. So they got their first permit approved in 2015. Their first extension was in 2017. Under the old zoning code, it was looked at as a conditional use permit, as a use that's similar to activities within a zone, but not a not listed as a as a use within the zone under our new zoning requirements um, it's now looked at as a temporary use permit we we created a new evaluation for temporary use permits so in 2019 for the first time you're seeing the temporary use permit uh, typically those are reviewed administratively by the community development director and can be approved administratively Due to the circumstances tied to the site and the fact that there has been an ongoing use here and this would actually be the second two-year extension for this property, I thought it would be more appropriate to take it back to City Council for, an, um, for the temporary use permit and limit it to two years because under the new zoning code, um, extensions can be granted twice for two-year periods. So this would be the last um, you know, extension within this permit. So. 835 Bay Avenue, um, the car storage site would be located behind where the model home currently exists. Um, Santa Cruz County Sanitation District is planning on utilizing the front area as a construction staging area. That area was identified when they got their original permit um, for the improvements that'll be going across the SoCal Creek. And there's a member, um, there's a representative here tonight if you have any questions about the staging area. 
um, and they are planning on starting that project in April or May of this year and it will likely carry through till December of the year and then once they've finished their construction um, Toyota is requesting that they be able to occupy the site um, up to within a hundred feet like maintaining a hundred foot setback from B Bay Avenue to where they would carry the fence across um, what that looks like here is you can actually see where their fence has been located in the past and it would just carry the fence the green fence across at the 100 foot line it's approximately at 100 feet according to GIS um, Toyota recently up uh, reinstalled new mulch and they've agreed to once their once the sanitation district has moved off the site they've agreed to um, also plant drought tolerant plants in the area and um, and then we would hold a, a deposit with them for $2,000. I'd gather that within the first 30 days of the permit being um, approved. And at the time when they vacate the site, I'd do an inspection of the site, and if the plants are established and the mulch looks good, they would get their $2,000 deposit back. If the site needs a little more um, updating, we could they could utilize the funds to ensure that the planting is looking fresh at the time of vacating the site. Today I did go out to the site and this is what it currently looks like. Um, unfortunately, Ideal Homes, they had trouble with getting a transportation permit for moving the mobile, the model home off site. They were, they intended to do it this week. They tried yesterday and today. They've been told that they'll be given a permit to transport this next Monday. Um, and the other remaining item is that the monument sign that's on the site was, was allowed temporarily and was also so supposed to be off the site at the time after the two-year period. So I would suggest that this evening, because a temporary use permit can be um, issued by the community development director, that the city council authorize me to, um, to approve the two-year temporary use permit upon the removal of the model home for the site and the um, monument sign. So once those two things are taken off the site, I could actually issue the permit, and that's I've changed my recommendation to ensure that that happens before the permit goes out. So with that, that concludes my presentation. Um, April Perry is here this evening from Red Tree Properties, and also Bruce Feinberg from Toyota, and they're happy to answer any questions you may have as well. A and there's also a representative from the um, sanitation district. Okay. Any questions? Sam. Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about what the long-term plan is for uh, Toyota. Um, in two years, are we going to be uh, back here again? Uh, thank you for having us here. <coughs> Um, our long-term plan is um, <clears throat> to occupy the area for two years, and we actually have alternative uh, plans in mind um, to store vehicles on our lot because we're going to be looking forward to some changes over there. Um, when I discussed this uh, with the planning department um, and Red Tree Properties, uh, I believe that you know we could reapply if that was the case, but. If we can't use the uh, area, then we're happy to make other arrangements. We're not uh, relying on that as a permanent um, source of storing vehicles. Okay, thank you. Sure. Anything else? No, I have a question for the sanitation district, though. Okay, thank you very much. We really appreciate your consideration of the permit. Well, yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, no. I think Sam has a follow. Well, I, I mean, I'll. I'll uh, follow no. you, Mayor, but I had a question for the sanitation district No, you as go well. first. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm last. <laughs> I just, um, I noticed that uh, that's part of that staging area includes uh, refueling uh, for the vehicles and the equipment, and I just wanted to hear a little bit more about uh, the mechanism for how that will be done, and um, just want to make sure that it's secure from any kind of spills on the Are property. Are you referring to, like, for the construction project, or? Yeah, the staging, oh, the yeah. staging for the construction project. So yeah, it. they'll they're going to use that staging area primarily for they're going to set up a, an office, uh, temporary like a mm -hmm. you know mobile office there. They're going to be storing pipe, 
for the uh, for the uh, for the project we're doing. We're actually going to install a pipe from the SoCal pump station, which is next to CVS, mm -hmm. underneath the creek over to Clara Street. Um, we're also doing upgrades to the pump station, installing valves. So there's going to be materials that they stack over in the staging area. Um, they'll have equipment there, and they'll probably be doing some refueling. But um, we have a, a we have a stormwater plan that's part of our plans, and we're uh, it's part of the part of our contract that the contractor is to you know contain the site and maintain water quality standards, and so we have to report to the state on all that. So it's pretty stringent as far as them keeping the site clean and dust control and all that good stuff. But we plan on finishing the project um, by the end of the year. That's the plan. That's the schedule, the current schedule. But okay. And I also read in the staff report that there was um, an intention to use this site for a project on Jade Street. Um, was that a another county project? Yeah, there's another county project in the jewel box is also a sanitation project, and I think they're planning to use... I lost um, her. They may be using a different <coughs> site, but we mm -hmm. haven't moved forward. They haven't moved forward with any request to move the site beyond this. Stage. Beyond this mm -hmm. one. Okay. At so the current the, time. Oh, right. Come closer to the microphone, please. Oh. Sorry. The, the need may change, but at the current moment, the county has not moved forward with a request on that additional um, use. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank I you. think they're talking to the school right there on 47th about using oh, a, yeah. a little yeah. piece of that mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. But it's just a small area. I'm not sure if they finalize that or not. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, my question is um, uh, protection, that's equipment and supplies and stuff like that. Is there going to be someone on that side in the evening throughout the day, that kind of thing? Um, is there going to be a fence around it? That kind of thing? I'm not sure if they're going to have a guard there or not. Um, I think if if it becomes an issue, they'll definitely get somebody over there. Okay. But it also depends on, <clears throat> you know, at what they're storing and at what times they're storing that. And As needed. You know, the value of the equipment. Okay. okay. That's my only question. Yeah. One, one follow-up, if I may. Um, you mentioned the fencing. It's going to be moved up to the front. Will that have the green screen on it as well to help kind of obscure? Um, yes. The location. Yes, sir. Yeah. yes. Okay. we'll continue that as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Oh, okay. Uh, no more questions. Um, discussion? Okay. That, about that. Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, are there any comments from the public that would like to come forward right now? Seeing none, come back to City Council. Yes. <coughs> Yeah, th this is quite a history of this project. As we all know, it's the gateway into the uh, city of Capitola, so we do have some concerns about it. Um, I think that the council last time, I believe Sam was here last time you were around, we, uh, we authorized IDEAL to move the trailer in someday, hoping that Red Tree would bring us a project that would be uh, something that would be beneficial and uh, add to the uh, charm and character of the city of Capitola. We like that idea, too. <laughs> <laughs> we know, and I, you know, it, it, I, I didn't want to ask you a question uh, because uh, you, you probably would have something to volunteer if you did. I just, in our hopes, as we give these extensions, which we freely did to Ideal, and we're doing to Toyota, as Toyota is a great partner for the city of Capitola, we appreciate your business. It is our hope someday that something uh, develops there. Although I do believe the timing, because of the sanitation project, happens to be really good at this point. So I'm uh, willing to support, you know, this uh, this measure so that everybody can get along and try to find what they do, and hopefully Toyota will find some home. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's not going to get extended if there seems to be a problem doing that because I think the city of Capitola tries to accommodate. However, with all that being said, we're just hoping that someday a project comes there to that corner that would really enhance that area. So uh, with that, I'm going to make a motion to approve the recommendation for uh, staff recommendation. Is there a second? And uh, I'll second, but to clarify, we're going to authorize uh, uh, the development director to issue a temporary use as, permit. As her adjust, uh, amended, uh, exactly. Right. Like, okay. I think it, it's important. Right. I mean, and I think you're going to be reasonable giving ideal time to get that off there, whatever their circumstances are. So it, it's the, the second recommendation. Yeah. Well, I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, any other discussion? I think that the sanitation district will be doing improvements that will be very beneficial to Red Tree as they move forward, too. So I look forward to that. Um, is there approval unanimous? All those in favor say aye. 
Aye. All those against? Nope. Okay, it passes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie. So let's move on to updated Capitol Village and Wharf Business Improvement Area contract. Item D. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so this next item before you is the Capitola Village Wharf and Business Improvement Area contract and revised fiscal year 1819 budget. So just by way of background, September 8th of 2005, the City of Capitola and the um, Capitola Village Wharf Business Improvement Area, or BIA, entered into an agreement to initiate the BIA assessment program. Over the years, the roles of uh, what the BIA did and what city staff did kind of changed and evolved. So in June of last year, we amended that original agreement to kind of redefine the roles and responsibilities as, as they kind of, um, how we were doing business. So um, in November, as you uh, remember, Capital of Voters approved Measure J, which allocated 0.4% of TOT revenue to local business groups, including the BIA which necess necessitated a need for us to revise that agreement to address the TOT revenue portions. Um, so staff did work with the BIA to come up with a re revised agreement. At the uh, BIA board meeting on March 12th, they unanimous unanimously approved the revised agreement and at the same time provided me with a um, revised budget for fiscal year 1819. And I have this on two different slides because it's hard to read. But the changes to the budget really is creating those different categories so that we could uh, better track the different types of revenue. So you have the assessment revenue that's kind of been programmed the way it's always been programmed and now they have the new TOT revenue coming in. And there's some certain things that the council would like to see with that TOT revenue. So we wanted to make sure we could account for those revenues and expenditures correctly. This is the second half, and I apologize, this one's a little harder to read, but um, what I wanted to point out was that on that middle column that shows the TOT revenue, they've included $5,000 or 33% of that TOT portion for village enhancements, which still needs to be defined, but it is earmarked for that. Um, and then in addition, you'll see that the amended budget increased 16,910 as opposed to 15,000, so they're pulling out of their existing fund balance which is kind of built up a little bit higher last year than we had anticipated. Um, so with that, the recommended action is to authorize the city manager to enter into an updated agreement with the BIA and, approved, and approve the revised budget. And there are members of the BIA here to answer questions if you have any about the contract or the budget. And okay. I please Someone Marcus. from the BIA like to come forward? Welcome, Devin. Welcome, Karin. Thank you. Karin Hanna and Devin Salter. Okay, any questions of staff and or the BIA? I do have a question. So I was looking through the budget and um, I came across an interesting item I've never seen before. Doubtful accounts. <laughs> what is a doubtful account? And it's uh, $3,000, so that's quite a large doubt doubtful accounts is just um, we've been trying to you know e every business in the in the village has to uh, pay a, a fee to the BIA uh, yearly and uh, it's based on the size of the business how many employees that type of thing uh, every year from year to year we have a number of businesses that do not pay uh, their dues and so we put in there an amount of what has kind of been the average over the years of money we have never been able to collect. Some of these, some of this, because business have gone out of, you know, gone out of business because of tough times, and it, we just can't get money out of them. Mm -hmm. Other ones are still in business, but we really have no recourse or no action that we can take against them, other than going to small claims, which would cost us more than what their dues are, basically. Um, so that's we put that in there as money that will probably be uncollectible. Okay. Um, Jim, is this something the uh, finance department could help the uh, BIM? Is this something 
that we just ignore? I mean, we, we are charging for our services. So well, I'm as Devin mentioned, the, the cost of trying to recover these is greater than what they typically owe. So we've, at this point, we've just kind of accepted that there's going to be a certain percentage of doubtful accounts. Can I, uh, yeah. can I offer a su just a suggestion? I mean, sure, please. So I, I was th been thinking about this <laughs> quite a bit lately, and I mean, would it be possible? And I know it's something that would have to be, uh, you know, rewritten into. I don't know if it's called city code or whatever, but you know, if if a business doesn't pay its dues and they get a letter saying that you know you're in delinquent of your dues and there's going to be a fee charged or whatever, and they still don't, you know, is there a way that their business permit could be revoked so that they couldn't perform their business activities until they pay the dues? I let the city manager address this. I don't think this is for discussion right now, but maybe in the future. Um, I don't know quite how to handle this um, other than what we're dealing with today. Yeah. Okay. So maybe further can discussion. I, can I later. just make one comment on that? This year is our best year so far for collections. We just got la this last week our last business that had not paid um, their assessment. So now we have other than uh, the people who have completely gone out of business or retired, and those have always just been written off. But as far as businesses that are in business now, every single business in the village has paid their assessment. We have maybe six or eight short-term rentals, and that's our, a very big challenge because those people sometimes never come to Capitola. We don't know really, we don't have the relationship with them, mm -hmm. but we are working on enhancing our relationship with the short-term rental people so they really, fully understand <coughs> what we're doing for them. And also, I believe that usually every year, some of those short-term rental people stop renting, because a lot of them just rent friends, family, that sort of thing, and they don't even bother to tell us. So in reality, it looks worse than it really is, okay, um, I think. So this has really been a good year for, for everybody, you know, stepping up and doing, pay, paying their assessments. Well, if there's some way we could help you, maybe that's for further discussion. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? Okay. Um, any questions from the audience of staff and the BIA? Hearing none, let's bring it back to City Council for action. Go ahead. Um, I yeah, I, I, I'd like to um, motion that we move forward with the proposed budget with, um, with some some guidance I'd like to offer regarding the village enhance maybe it could possibly fall under the village enhancement piece. Um, you earlier were able to meet our the new director Rachel Kippen from uh, the O'Neill uh, the O'Neill Sea Odyssey, and um, I was able to sit down with her and she brought to my attention that the state is now going to be held a bit more liable on how much garbage ends up in mm -hmm. our our drain and into the ocean which made me think about our current plastics ordinance um, that Capitola has in place and how much the city is really um, implementing that. And from my experience when I visit several different restaurants or places around town, I've noticed that there's still straws being used and plastics being used. Um, so I was thinking that this might be an opportunity for the BIA to partner with the um, O'Neill Sea Odyssey um, possibly using some of these funds um, to maybe implement a campaign of sort, sorts or, I mean, I think the options are really endless, um, but this just might be a good opportunity to th um, think about that and um, it's a good starting place. So I'd like to offer that um, with the motion. Second. Okay. Sam? Maybe just to contribute to that, I think we should uh, bring the commission, our own commission on the environment into that uh, conversation as well. I think that could be very helpful. Okay. Yeah, just a comment. I, you know, I, I just want to acknowledge that the city and the BIA have always had a good working relationship. And what we're seeing here is some additional funds being uh, diverted to the BIA through the TAOT, which was supported by the BIA. And I think this is just uh, coming to fruition of the agreement that we had. And uh, I, I think it's great that there are uh, allocating a certain amount of the funds, and I hope it's an amount that, that they find that they can work within that still supports their endeavor to improve the business association. And understand that, you know, what the, the funds that you say, they're either to improve or promote the city of Capitola. So uh, just a little bit of guidance on that. Seems like you're getting lots of suggestions on how to spend that money, and I'm sure that your uh, board will come up with great ways to uh, either improve or promote the city of Capitola. So thank you for what you do. 
any other comments? Um, I'd like to say this is, I think, a great sign. It's part of the evolution of how we're working together. Um, like I said at the last meeting, I consider the arrangement between the BIA, the Business Improvement Association, and the city as a partnership. Um, I truly believe that um, we're all working for the betterment of this area, the city of Capitola, the village, and its residents. So with that in mind, I would look forward to further discussion. I don't know who's going to be the representative from the city council here. Um, I hope that person will be part of that discussion. And um, I think some of the suggestions that just came up is a good one because, as you know, uh, plastic... Um, is a big issue right now, and um, there's many agencies that are working on cleaning up the beach. SOS is another one, so um, Sabre Shores. So that is a good one. A lot of people would pay attention to the fact that the BIA is actually contributing there. So with that, um, I'd like to call the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so passes. Thank you very much for attending. Okay. So with that, let's move on to Fiscal year. Now, principles. This is going to be a big one, I think. I bet you're going to take this, Jamie. You are. Mayor, Good. members of the council. So, council's aware, I think I've done this before many times, but I always like to set the stage a little bit if someone's just tuning in for the first time. We prepare our budget annually, which really provides the blueprint for city operations for any given year. One of the things we try to do is have the council adopt budget principles, goals, key projects and programs ahead of time, <clears throat> which helps staff prepare a budget that's consistent with your expectations at the front end. Uh, it helps us establish metrics by which we can measure our performance over the course of a year. And it also helps in clearly articulating to our residents what our city's priorities are if we've clearly identified our budget goals and policies and programs um, at the outset. We held our first meeting on these budget goals and principles two weeks ago, um, and that's this is a continuation of that hearing. So, you know, the way I kind of think about this is our guiding principles are sort of the broad direction around our city's trajectory. Uh, we try to establish underneath these things the key projects and programs that are really t uh, tangible focus areas for us to work on in a future year, in a given year. And then it allows us to establish specific budget line items or, you know, metrics, if you will, to sort of measure our achievement as we go. Um, We've identified principles in the past in three broad categories. We have fiscal policies, public service policies, and public improvement policies. The three that we talked about at the last meeting that are relatively consistent from prior years is to maintain a balanced budget to ensure our ongoing expenditures and revenues match, to use one-time revenues for one-time expenditures, and to ensure that our budget's planning for the future uh, and that it, it, it accounts for um, uh, uh, future cost increases and reasonable revenue estimates as we look into the future. Under public service, we talk about maintaining and improving upon the transparency of the city's operations and improving residents' accessibility to our government. Um, recognize the high priority the community places, and we had a small tweak at the last meeting, which is subject to the council's approval this evening, but to the public safety, previously read public safety. And then analyze future uh, service level increases with long-term financial impacts to ensure financial stability. Make sure we don't get in uh, over our head, if you will, in the future. And then lastly, we identify sort of the broad principles under which our public improvements sit, maintaining the city's infrastructure by providing the maximum funding for our pavement management that we can, maintaining and improving upon our natural resources and our sustainability programs, and ensure the maintenance and cleanliness of our city facilities, our sidewalks, streets, um, beaches, all of those things in there. So at our last, oh, so at our last meeting we had a, the list of projects from the last fiscal year, um, and council asked for sort of an update on where we stood on them. So we, we will be circling back during our budget you know, more comprehensively on the, what the goals were last year and where we got, but this is sort of a check-in point. Uh, we had developing the options for PERS costs, which um, uh, we have certainly talked about and we will continue to talk about so that would be one that i would recommend carrying forward and it's not one that i recommend anticipate we will solve next year it's one that i think is going to continue need, need to continue to be on our radar for years to come we did complete our regulatory framework for cannabis implemented a, a new neighborhood watch program we've been working towards the coastal commission certification of our zoning code update uh, and we will continue to be doing that next year 
Um, and we're also continuing to work with the mall uh, on mall redevelopment projects and mall redevelopment efforts. And so we've been doing it this year and we would recommend continuing it next year. Then we have some of the CIP projects. One was beginning construction of the library, which we've done, and we would also uh, recommend continuing that as a priority to get it done next year. Uh, we talked about constructing the Jetty and Flume project this fiscal year and then completing the design of the wharf. Uh, as the council will recall, we've, we've held on the Flume and Jetty product uh, project pending an announcement of a grant award. Um, so I think now it's scheduled for potentially, I think we're looking at fall of 2020 at this point for that project. Uh, and then the wharf design is we're gonna be bringing it back to council with some, um, some revised options based on the feedback last fall uh, coming up here shortly, the next couple meetings. Um, and the other capital project that we called out was the Rispin Park, which we're scheduling into bid this summer. Um, Romer Street, you got an update on that public meeting. We're scheduled to bid that this fall. Uh, and then Park Avenue scheduled to bid in May, coming up here in a couple months. And then the Slurry Seal project is complete. So then at the last meeting, you'll remember that council members all identified projects and programs for next fiscal year. We ended up, this is sort of where we left the meeting last time, and council said, staff, take a look at this and let's put this into a framework that we can work from. So it looks a little bit like a uh, sort of a murder investigation plot line, but, but <laughs> what this is is I tried to take each one of our the identified um, key programs and policies that the council identified, put them into one of our sort of basic pillars, whether it's fiscal, public service, or public improvements. Um, also called out a couple of new ones that as I went through this, I realized I thought that were probably priorities for the council and for us to work on next year. This first one um, we'll touch on more as we dive into each one of these, but is, is, is working with the Finance Advisory Committee on future revenue options. Um, took all of the CIP type projects and I'm recommending that at this point we don't put much more energy into discussing sort of the priority behind them. I think what we really need to do is, is direct Steve to come back in the budget with some costing around these different options and then once we have actual budget figures for what we think we might have available for CIP, then we start looking at which ones of these we're gonna tackle because I think the answer is different if we have $50,000 than if we have $500,000 available for our CIP. And then I'm suggesting these other two projects at this point, which was the McCormick Triangle Park, um, putting it sort of more in, in sort of a parking lot or in, I put it in the cloud here. Um, what I was, my suggestion on that one is, is if the residents organize as a petition and were to approach, approach our public works department as an organized and a cohesive front, um, I don't think it needs to rise to the level of a, a sort of a key city project. That's something we would just help a neighborhood do if they came to us and said, we'd like to landscape this area and we would be able to allocate some resources and some crew time to help just make that happen if any neighborhood came to us. My concern is, is I don't know whether the neighborhood's actually unified in what they would wanna do and I don't know that we wanna have city resources trying to bring them together around um, some sort of project. In addition, we talked a little bit about county partnering with county economic development. Um, I've been talking to the folks at county economic development and I think that the mall project is a great sort of trial project to see some of their expertise with the really successful local businesses and helping engage them with the mall owners as they start thinking about mall redevelopment and helping use their contacts to put them in touch with not just the national chains but also some of our local homegrown um, successful businesses. So. This is, uh, e each one of the projects has a code and these are sort of the three recommended, uh, SR stands for staff recommendation, CC for city council and these were the key fiscal programs for next year was develop options for council consideration to address rising CalPERS costs, uh, to complete the review and evaluation of the community grant program and then this is the, one of the new ones which is work with the finance advisory committee to identify future revenue options. Um, now again, diving into the next basic principle the, the public service uh, staff recommendation continue to, this is a continuation of the council's goal from last year's continuing to work with the mall and redevelopment. Um, uh, council member Peterson mentioned evaluating the parking meter technology. We've actually already um, begun that. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was good to hear because I think we've had some questions internally about whether our, our technology was appropriately focused and, and in a, our initial evaluation, we think that we can do better. Um, we also talked about having, council talked about having the Art and Cultural Commission focused on the 41st Avenue corridor in the library. 
Um, actually, I think the library was a staff suggested addition given some of the comments we heard at the last meeting around the Art and Cultural Commission work plan. Complete the recreation strategic plan, continuing to work towards Coastal Commission certification of our zoning code update. Complete, complete the licensing um, of, for two retail cannabis establishments and develop our auditing and inspection plan. Use the dedicated children's fund for youth programming. Um, consider allocating the freed up general fund associated with that for, for the community center in next year's budget. Uh, this is another staff recommendation here is grow the relationship with Central Fire for lifeguard services. The reason why I think that that may be an important, is that the train? I think it's just Sorry. the air conditioner. I thought it was It's an just earthquake. the air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> it wound up. <laughs> I, thought we had, I thought we had an earthquake for a second there. <laughs> My apologies for the brief intermission there. Uh, yes, we know it's not a tree coming down. It's not a little bit of a tree. Um, the reason why staff would recommend adding the central fire one around lifeguard services is that this has been a real internal focus for a number of years trying to find a solution long-term sustainable solution to our junior guard program and maybe sort of articulating that it's a goal that a community knows that we're working on it maybe a value and then uh council mentioned a sort of a state of the city report uh, and i think that that could be relatively easily incorporated into our budget presentation and kind of the front end as our city manager's message which is effectively kind of a broad overview on where we're sitting revenues expenditures recent accomplishments future challenges um, and we can we can easily take that incorporated into our budget presentation and maybe elevate it a little bit um, and then we have the the, the key projects and programs, which is complete the funded CIPs and complete the 1819 CIPs would continue on as, as key goals. Complete the library construction and wharf design, uh, evaluate our unfunded CIPs, which we can do during the budget process, and then complete Brisbane Park. And then, as I mentioned before, these were the projects that were mentioned, CIP type projects that were mentioned at last week's meeting my recommendation is, is that we hold those until the budget deliberations and then these two other items that i talked about briefly uh that we kind of hold them for future consideration depending on how the future turns out so with that my, what i'm looking for this evening is confirmation of the high level budget principles approval of the key projects and programs for inclusion in the draft budget and then we would continue the cip projects to the actual budget hearings and with that, I'm available for questions. Sam? Jamie, uh, thank you. This is a very helpful worksheet. Um, and under public service, the item um, consider reallocating freed up general fund for community center. You talk about the Jade Street Community Center? So my recollection was that was a Councilwoman Brooks brought that item up, and I think she maybe can articulate a little bit more clearly. Yeah, my, my thought behind that was that the freed up general fund dollars would be used to kind of revamp, revitalize, paint the Jade Street Community Center. Um, I mean, I, I thought that maybe that's what, the, wouldn't that come under public improvements though? Is that public service? Is that, not that it matters, but. Um, yeah, so the reason, yeah, I, I think it easily could be put under public improvements. I think it could be put under public improvements. Definitely a CIP project. Well, not a CIP project, because we don't consider the facilities type project as CIPs, but. I'm not sure how much the allocation is, because we've talked about extensive work to the community center, oh, and I'm not sure the level of what we're talking about. 25,000, yeah. 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 We're talking about just paint, then it's apples and oranges. Okay, yeah. but I right. want to be careful. I appreciate your comment. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Okay, any questions from the audience? I see someone with a big smile, but no questions. Okay, bring it back to the City Council for action. I just have a comment. I, I, I think that's a, that you put together a great list. I appreciate the time and effort coming back to us with that. I think it captures almost all the things that we put out um, and I love, I'd be willing to confirm that. I'm really excited by one line in there at the end of the report where it said something that I would really look forward to. It said complete Rispin Park. So, um, you know, I, of all the things that are on that list, it's the one that excited me the most. So, uh, Sam chuckles also. Absolutely. So, uh, I would make a motion to uh, confirm the, uh, the list that was presented to us. 
Okay, is there a second? Second. Ah, motion and a second. Uh, any comments? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yvette. Um, so yeah, I appreciate the work that was put into this. This is uh, yet uh, a great time to an opportunity to see a lot of the things um, that were requested by city council to be moved forward. My only suggestion would be when brought um, next time during the budget hearings, if two additional columns could be added um, for dates, so a start or implementation date on, on these projects and a potential completion date, um, just so that we can use it this as an actual tool as we move forward as we move forward um, in our budget and the next year and the next year. So it'd be nice to see, so I could track that too. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilwoman Brooks, I, I think that that's a good idea. I mean, I think the, the, the notion behind this is to establish a bit of a sort of work plan. I mean, the, the, right. they're gonna be, we're gonna have to figure out how exactly to incorporate them into the budget, but the notion is, is we're gonna have a plan to accomplish them and identifiable metrics and whether that's, you know, firm dates or exactly how we do that, yeah. uh, we'll take a look at. Yeah, as a new new council member, when I see Rispin Park and everyone chuckles, you know, that started back in 2000, blah, blah, blah. You know, so just to have a frame of reference as we... Right, 1980. 1980. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Actually, so, back to the poor Claire's, right? <laughs> <laughs> so just to have that kind of frame. So would, you weren't suggesting a, sort of a, a go forward, you're where the origin, where these projects came well, from? Well, I mean, just what we have up there, again, if there was a two comp two columns added one that would be implementation would be you know 2018 for evaluating parking meter technology and our completion date would be summer of two, 2020 or something like that just yep. as a um, a frame of a reference we don't have to go us. back to the Rispin project not 1980 mm -hmm. whatever it was mentioned yeah no okay thank you any other questions yeah well I have a few comments um so one of the projects here is uh, moving the porta potties out at the uh, park that we have on McGregor, and um, I'd like to suggest that everyone on the city council go out there and uh, take a look at where the porta potties are located. So I dug in the history a little bit, and, and uh, actually this was uh, Laura Hills, uh, Laura Hills' uh, project on the uh, Art and Cultural Committee, and she gave me a pretty good rundown. So when we built the, um, the half pipe, the big huge cement tr structure, no one had a concept that we were gonna put a mural in. So that wasn't envisioned at that time and obviously we needed porta potties and there was nothing there to um, hide at the time so we just put them in a convenient spot. So when you go out there, take a look at the mural which is I think pretty interesting. Um, it's not the kind of mural that I grew up with, but it's something that means a lot to the, the people who use the um, skate park. So envision that without the porta potties in front of it. And I went out there with Jamie uh, one day and we were looking around trying to figure out other areas where the porta potties might fit. And just in terms of placement, the ADA porta potty doesn't have to be right next to the, the regular size porta potty so they can be distributed. So try to imagine what that mural would look like without two porta potties in front of it. So that's why I put that out there as a suggestion. Um, the other idea is that where the porta potties are right now, there could be tables there so that the families that come out there and the people who use the park could sit there and use what tables are meant for, picnics or gathering and sitting around and talking. Um, Yes, the McCormick Triangle thing will be definitely happening. I think there's a lot of ownership of that little area. But my most important thing that I put on there from my perspective uh, goes back to when I heard Sam Farr talk about this area in terms of an economic engine. And we have to focus on what this community of Santa Cruz, Monterey, and even San Benito does in terms of elevating our economic activity. What does Capitola have as its resource? There's organizations that are focused on economic activity, but in reality we have a department connected with the um, Santa Cruz County. And so I agree with you that our main leverage here is with the 41st. But on a very granular level, 
I'm also concerned about the individual businesses that are here and their ability to be successful. And part of that has to do, I think, with how we match the businesses that we bring into Capitola and what we can do to make sure those matches are good ones. And so I think in the traditional sense of economic development, we try to make that match fit best for our community, fit best for what we would like to have in Capitola, broaden out the offerings that we have for the visitors here and help make a vibrant community commercial center. So that was the purpose, I put that there. I totally agree, we gotta focus on 41st first, but I think if we develop a relationship with the county department, we could actually broaden our effort here and help our village. I hate to see all the vacancies, let's just put it that way. And this, I think, could be a way for us to work on that. It's a very traditional type of effort that you see in most commercial areas that have this together. So that's, those are the three things I'd like to talk about. So um, we have a motion, I believe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Carries. Thank you very much. It was an excellent presentation. Thank Appreciate you. it. So let's move on to optional CalPERS membership for future council members. Yeah. Do you have a presentation? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Good evening, uh, Mayor Bertrand, council members. Um, I'm here to talk about a, uh, a request that was put on the, uh, was uh, staff was given direction in October um, to begin the process to uh, remove the optional membership option for council, future council members. This is only pers perspective and that's with all CalPERS things, you can't make a change to an existing either po positive or negative, um, it has to be for a future. Um, so we've started the process and we, we got the, the, the documents back from CalPERS um, and it will be for the next, every council member has the option at, currently to make these choices at, when they're elected. So obviously this, there'd be no financial impact in 2018, 19 or 1920. The next election, if someone came in, they would not be able to be a CalPERS member if this goes through. So currently we have two council members who are CalPERS members and the, the, the other three are PARS, which is our alternative to social security option. Um, so this, this uh, process is we have to get the, the resolution as well as the pass the ordinance to CalPERS so they can start their process. We would then have a second reading in, I believe the second meeting in um, April. Um, the, f the, the real fixed cost for the CalPERS retirement is an additional $325 a year. Um, that doesn't include any, any unfunded liability because honestly removing it doesn't actually affect the whole number because it's such a small piece. So again, the, r the recommended action is to adopt the resolution of intent and pass the first reading of the, the related ordinance. And I'm here to answer any questions. Oh, Sam. Larry, what was the council's thinking or what was the purpose of making this request? Um, I, I, I don't know the purpose, um, but it was to, I think, to um, possibly um, talk about re reducing the, the, the city's retirement overall cost. I, I, I don't know the, the, the purpose. It was a request at a, a council meeting and we did the research and kind of and brought it back to see what would, what would have to be done. Aren't those council members who participate in the optional program, PERS program, and I'm one of them, Yes. Uh, don't they pay for um, that option? They, they, yes, they do. They do pay for a percentage, but the difference still is uh, the, the city pays a little more for that um, than they do for the, the optional, um, the, the alternative Social Security PARS. Yes, absolutely. Council members pay the exact same as all other miscellaneous employees. Uh -huh. So each year council members pay 13 and a half Thir percent yeah. towards the first cost and the city picks up, I think the remaining think the seven, seven yes. or so. Seven and see. so the difference between the 7% that and first the, cost and what is PARS cost? It's, it's about one and a half percent. That's the, and that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the, the 325, 25 that's now. correct. Okay. That's correct, I'm sorry if I didn't yeah. explain that. Well, thank you for answering my question. Any other questions? Any questions from the public on this issue? Good evening. Good evening again, Karin Hanna. Um, 
I want to congratulate you on this taking this step because uh, it's in the news every day pension crisis pension reform um, the current pensions paid to former city council members is over fifty five thousand dollars per year so it's not an inconsequential sum and uh, 325 sounds inconsequential but there um, you know it adds up now this isn't going to change that I totally acknowledge that but cities and counties and states are taking measures to reform pensions asking employees to uh, take less or contribute less than their predecessors did and so I really feel this is real leadership on your part to step up and take this step to say we're going to make this change too again it's not it doesn't appear to be a, a large sum but over a long period of time in the lifetime of council members it does it it def definitely does add up and makes a significant um, amount so I think this is just really uh, it's a really good gesture and um, I think it's just a, an important step in the big picture for the state of California and the trouble that that the state is in because of the of the pension situation so I congratulate you and I thank you for 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 considering this thank you thank you Carmen for those comments any other comments from public seeing none come back to the City Council for a motion and discussion maybe Ed? well since it was me that brought this uh, forward back in October I'll go ahead and add a little detail to it um, I think uh, Karen I would I would probably go on and elaborate but you pretty much said everything I would say so eloquently so I, I support everything Karen said and this really is all about pension reform uh, there's no doubt that our pension system is struggling uh, this is something that we bring and we uh, when we negotiate with all of our employees we uh, have established tier one tier two even now tier three with our employees trying to explain them the importance of how our pension system needs reform and I think that uh, good way to set example is that is is that uh, it, although it may seem like an insignificant amount uh, it does add up and uh, I don't think that uh, that uh, you know it's required by law that council members must have some form of uh, of Social Security which doesn't exist here so we were given the option for PARS which is a way of compensating but PERS is an expensive premium program and because of that I believe that this is a step in the right direction I think that council setting a good example to the employees to, 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 to at least acknowledge in some small form that that we acknowledge that there's a problem and we're going to do our part to try to work towards that and try to uh, rescue our failing pension system so with that I'll make a motion to uh, adopt the resolution uh, staff recommendation second I'll second that thank you motion and second any more discussion well, yes I'd like to speak to it and I feel a little bit uncomfortable talking about my own benefits here but um, this is about future council members um, and um, 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 I guess the trouble I have with it is because I do view that it is a relatively small amount of money um, and it may be symbolic but the consequences are is that you are only going to have people running for city council who are already well healed and can afford to sit in this position without consideration for themselves their future their retirement their families their children um, and I think that there needs to be another body to uh, discuss those consequences um, because these things do not come without a cost and I don't think there's any consideration of that side of the balance sheet and um, you know I kind of think of it as starving the head um, and I don't think that that's all a good thing so I'm that's why I'm not going to support the motion there is a sense that um, you know city council members are often congratulated almost feel like I'm come come back from Vietnam and people congratulate you for your service but in fact um, what is the amount you actually get paid for this service um, our payment is next to nothing and um, everyone here that's been here multiple years and you have a lot more to look forward to and so do you 
as our newest members, um, know that we put in an awful lot of time at meetings. I talked about three meetings that I went to. That was probably a third or a fourth of what I did this last week. And I give it with, without any reservation because I truly love what I'm doing. And I think everyone up here does too. But I also think that, um, I don't know how to, s to respond with what Sam said, but um, it's something to think about. A lot of is asked of the city council members and we're congratulated on doing it and it's not for money, but there is, the, there is the issue that a lot of us have young families and uh, may have young families. Um, I, I'm retired, <laughs> so I have the time. I'm a little unique here. Ed, I, I can't talk for anyone else here. I'm not going to do that, but um, I think we found our own way to this position and um, I'm just very happy we're here but I think society has to recognize that people who give a public service, whether it's employed public service, like our staff here in city council, I mean like our staff in capital and also our unemployed in the sense, <laughs> our own paid staff in city council and those who are on all our particular committees. Um, I don't know what to say. I, I appreciate the party that we have every year. Let's put it that. It's a great party. And it's always been a great party. And um, I, I'm sort of rambling here because I, I don't really know what to say. But I think this democracy really depends on a lot. It depends on dedicated public servants, whether you're paid or whether you're not. I guess that's what I'm gonna say. I'm just totally appreciative of all the public servants that are here in Capitola, the paid ones and the unpaid ones, because that's what makes this government, that's what makes this city work. And then there's the city volunteers. I include them too. Thank you. So there's a motion. If there's a second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. With that. But those yeah. opposed. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Sam. Do you <laughs> Are any opposed? No. Okay. My vote is no. Your vote is no. Okay. Um, and I, I, I had to speak because I, I realized what you were talking about. I hope I captured some of it. I do have an announcement. Uh, we have tonight a very special person, Hudson uh, uh, Census, who's now taking control of our video service that's provided to the community for anyone who wants to watch this um, city council meeting and other council meetings moving forward. He will be at the controls. He's a brand new person, just completed his training. So thank you, Hudson. And with that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.